Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Amina and today we're doing a bit of reflecting and I asked myself the question the other day, was my PhD worth it? Now this is such a huge load of question and I think it's quite a tough one for a lot of us to think about when we think about decisions that we've made in life. Would we have been better off not doing the thing? And the reason why I was thinking about it is because, you know, the new academic year is beginning and I'm getting a lot more views and comments on videos to do with like starting a PhD or starting off like university and it just made me think about about this time, I don't know how many years ago now when I was 22 years old and I was starting my PhD and like the mindset that I was in and sort of what I thought would come out of the PhD and where I thought I'd be five years on. So I've, it's been five years now since I've graduated. So did I think I'd be where I am now and was it worth that? journey I guess. When I entered my PhD I thought I'm gonna be a postdoc, I'm gonna go into lecturing, I'm gonna have my own lab, I'm gonna stay in academia and I think that's what most of us think when we start our PhD, we do think that that is the end goal. A lot of minds change very quickly <laughs> when you start academia which is why about more than 50% of people who've completed PhD do not end up in academia, they end up in other roles in industry or in usually in finance, banking, science communication, like publication. They things outside of academia and it's just interesting why that is and I wanted to reflect upon it a bit today. So if you want to see a bit more content like this from me in terms of like PhD content and if you are starting your PhD then do subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be as honest as I possibly can so I'll tell you if I think it's not worth it and I'll tell you if I think it is worth it. Obviously I was really happy with my PhD as you probably know if you've watched me for any amount of time but there are aspects of it wasn't really worth it in some cases so let's get started. Now like before I tell you whether I think it was worth it or not I just wanted to kind of touch upon what worth it like what worth and worth it refers to now for someone else worth it might mean that I got the job that I wanted I, I ended up being a top professor I got a Nobel Prize or you know I managed to make a vaccine for the latest pandemic or I got a job that paid X amount that is for some people is worth it but I think now that I, you know the older you get as well you stop thinking about worth in just financial or like career terms but you also think about worth in terms of like happiness and satisfaction and sort of yeah like life satisfaction and that's really important and I have to be aware that that is quite a privileged I guess position privileged thing to think not everyone can just do something because they enjoy it and they think that they're happy doing it but I think it is something to take into account because if you're not happy doing something then how can you be happy doing it for the rest of your life you can't even just spend two or three years being happy doing it. For me, when I talk about being worth it, I'm, I'm talking about not just career and finance, but also how much I loved it and how like it was honestly just the best time, the best three years that I had in my life. So firstly, I wanted to talk about career prospects and whether or not it's been worth it in that department. Now I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna preface this by saying no, it's not worth it in career wise if you don't stay in academia don't necessarily think it's worth it and the reason for that is because when you graduate at the age of 26 27 from a PhD your peers who did a bachelor's graduated at 21 and are you're both gonna enter the same career if you're not in academia so let's say you wanted to go into finance consulting whatever you're gonna enter a graduate role at the same position as a 21 year old so by the time you get to 30 by the time they get to 30 they've done 10 years almost of work and you've done like two or three years so in that sense no it's not worth it and I think when I was deciding on what I wanted to do I personally ended up going for a role kind of a blend so it's kind of academia kind of not academia so I went for a role that's a teaching role so I got a PGCE to allow me to teach in secondary but also I can teach in post-secondary and also university so it gave me that teaching ability but it also allowed me to have like half the week where I can do my own research so I'm currently based at King's College London and I'm a research associate there so I've got that blend of both but if I wanted to, let's say I decided to continue with teaching, it, it wouldn't have been worth it because how am I any different to a teacher that's just come out of uni at 21 and gone into the workforce? My friends who went into teaching at 21 are now head of department, deputy heads, you know, re have really senior, very well paid roles. Whereas I'm not at that stage because I've only been in that field for a few years. No, it wasn't worth it in that sense. But like I said, the reason why I 
went for that is because I wanted that particular opportunity, which gave me a kind of half and half. So I'm not full time in teaching and I'm not full time in research, but it allows me to have that continual contact and that continual con like cont continuity, I guess, with academic space. But I do hope to kind of focus more on like, university lecturing in the near future. And so in that sense, I guess it was helpful because it meant that, you know, I can't really, I mean, you, you can, I think you can lecture these days without a PhD, but not at like top universities. So I would, I do really want to lecture just that, for that to be my more heavily focus of my career. So having a PhD is important in that sense. There are ifs and buts, it really depends. Like in my situation, I think it was necessary, but also some aspects I didn't really need it. So it wasn't necessarily worth it at all. But I think, like I said, if you are someone who wants to stay in academia, then it's 100% worth it. I don't know how much you guys know about the PhD, like post PhD process, but if you do stay in academia, you do something called a postdoc. So it's a postdoctoral. It's a position that is, you're not a permanent member of the lab, you have a contract depending on the funding for one year, two years, max three years. I think I've heard of a five year one, but yeah, it's usually about three years. So it's not that long at all. By the time you've started some research, written a paper, published, like your time's gone and you now need to reapply for funding if you want to stay in the same lab or if you want to, you know, continue on with that particular research project or you need to apply and work somewhere else. So can you imagine like starting a job after you've graduated from a PhD and only having a one year or like two year contract you're not a permanent member of the university you're not employed like it's just so unstable it's so unstable and i think it's i've seen it firsthand being in the lab looking at postdocs like having to go from one, like one partner one if they're if they're a couple one partner got a job in germany so he, he or she's gone there one's in france one stayed in the uk one got their grant renewed one didn't so they have to go so it's just like there's no stability whereas with an actual job <laughs> with any other job you know that right i'm starting the job you're gonna be there until you leave essentially you're not having to apply for the salary that you're being paid you know what i mean like it's a very weird concept academia it's very very weird which is why you either have to be in it fully and down <laughs> for that ride or not and I think I quickly realized that I'm not when I just I kept seeing my supervisor going through the grant process every time he wanted to he was permanent in the lab because he's a professor but seeing him go through that process to apply for funding so he can get PhDs or he can get postdocs and two three weeks that he was in that process and going for interviews and having to fly flew out to Switzerland for a day and came back like the same day for an interview and all that all that like it's just not for me personally it was just not something that I was interested in being involved in and like I said especially as I've got a family now it's just I, I, I can't have that instability I've got a mortgage like where I don't know where next year's paycheck is going to come from so I think academia wasn't for me fully but if I could get a lecturing role where it's salaried and you know there's a set amount that I get every month and I'm not having to apply for my own funding I absolutely love that and to be honest nowadays I've read quite a lot about universities and like what direction they want to go in and they want lecturing to be more of a standalone profession because right now lecturing is kind of an additional responsibility that a researcher has so as a researcher as a professor you know you've got your lab you've got your people that you work with you in your lab you've got your postdocs your PhD students blah de blah and then on the side you do a bit of lecturing and that's an additional responsibility that you take on as part of your role so you haven't actually applied for the lecturing that isn't what you want to do but it comes with the territory essentially and like I said I've seen first hand what that looks like from the background and I've also seen firsthand what that looks like as a student being lectured to a lot of lecturers just don't care they don't put the effort in it's, it's just part of their day like today I've got, I'm lecturing for an hour like it's not you know it's not something that they are passionate about which is why you'll find like in medicine or dentistry where you have actual lecturers who are dentists or doctors but they've done an educational masters and they're part of the educational group of bringing you know teaching the next medics and the next doctors the next dentists even they're a lot more passionate and you'll find a lot like a better relationships whereas with my lecturers that I had for biochemistry it was like I said they were I don't want to say forced <laughs> but they're not they're not they didn't apply to be there essentially so now universities are trying to change that up and trying to make lecturing an actual profession so you apply for it you get trained for it because it does require training you get taught how to lecture you get taught you know what your slides should look like what kind of handouts and yeah so I'm hoping to go down that route in the next like you know couple of years as like my next step essentially and I think I would suit it I think I would suit teaching at university I've done quite a bit of it already and I really really enjoy it so I hope to find something that is more permanent 
and maybe like three, four days a week as opposed to a full week. Again, when I was thinking about whether or not it was worth it, I, I thought about financial side of things, the career side of things, you know, I could have done better possibly. Could have started earlier in a different role and I would have climbed up a lot higher, fair enough. But the biggest reason why I think it was worth it is what has come from my PhD that I never expected. And that's all of this, my YouTube channel, the courses that I've developed, from the skills that I've gained over the years. My business, <laughs> like I am a CEO, co-founder of The Page Doctor. We are working on trying to get investment. We are doing so well. We've got over 15 freelance editors that work for us. This is a completely different realm of anything, like to anything that I ever thought that, that I would do five years on from a PhD. And all of it comes from the fact that I did a PhD. The skills that you gain during a PhD, like the soft academic, soft skills, professional skills but also the academic skills so all the skills that you gain aside from the actual like laboratory skills because you can't really use that outside the lab make a lot of money right now with all the tests that people are needing to do but the other skills that I gained are so valuable if you want to talk about value and like money they are so valuable because we were just not taught it at university essentially like no we're not taught how to read academic papers we're not taught how to publish we're not taught how to write academically and how to do like research properly like we're not taught these things so when students go through the process go through those you know times in their life when they're doing writing and reading and planning and essay writing they actually are they're just stuck and they look for support and if you're someone who has that skill and that is able to provide that support it could be so lucrative but also very rewarding i never thought that just starting a channel would lead to like all of this basically it's opened so many doors for me i cannot even begin to fathom like how many doors open for me you, you could say this is a very special case and it is a special case like not every single you know, phd student is going to start a youtube channel but i've seen so many people that have taken their knowledge from their phd and made it into something else either made like written a book and they've made courses and like you know, they're not known or they don't have the face out there like me but they're doing really well because their courses and their books are excellent they've built platforms start started businesses tech like the science tech space there are so many different things that you can do the list is endless when you have a PhD because of the skills that you gain and I think for me if I was to think about value and whether it was worth it like five years on even if I didn't get a job even if I didn't you know have any use of it specific use of it like that this in itself like what I've gained since that for me it, like, it makes it completely worth it also one of the other things that I really want to do is I want to work in educational policy and as I said I'm really passionate about education if you don't know already I'm so passionate about teaching education and I don't really care what country it is in but just in general like I'm passionate about like the quality of education that students receive and a lot of the time policymakers are either not educators so they're not teachers they're not people that have ever taught and have ever been on that front line or they're you know they're not well I know this is pretty much true with a lot of like you know ministers and health ministers like they don't have any experience they're businessmen and women they don't have any experience in that particular field which is why a lot of these issues occur with like the NHS and education people that are making these decisions they're not on the front line they're not seeing what's happening day to day they don't understand the challenges and the issues that occur and so having that experience and having that first-hand experience in education both higher and also low education it just means that I'm able to be I think a bit more critical and analytical over the process that I take when thinking about policy so I spent some time actually it was just before the pandemic it was when I was pregnant like just my early pregnancy in the first trimester I can't believe I did. I did so much during the first trimester in October of 2019 I spent some time in the DfE the Department of Education in one of the departments, the policy departments, and they were advising ministers, so MPs, the education ministers, the various education ministers, they were advising them on different policies. So that could be, you know, how schools are examined or how kids are examined or how schools are run, what time school day should be. Like all these decisions that you see on the news are made firstly by policy makers in the Department of Education, who are just normal people like me and you. And then they then would advise that to ministers who then obviously make the final decision based on their, because the ministers are of a certain party, so based on their party politics and based on their, you know, ethics, morals, whatever, they'll make their decision. So what I realized is that that policy making is so research 
heavy and I didn't realize how much having a PhD would be helpful. They gave me a little project to work on. I was working on that project and I had to look at a lot of data. So it was quite data science heavy as well. So I had loads of spreadsheets and I had to look at lots of data. Um, and it's so interesting. And you know, these policies make such a big difference in children's lives, in students' lives, in you know, university students' lives, in lecturers' lives, like at every stage of the educational sphere, these changes and these policies make such a big impact. And so that's why I really want to be involved in that. Again, having a PhD means that I've got those skills and in fact one of the reasons why I was able to go and work there for a little bit is because I do have those skills and I was able to mention that when I spoke to someone there to round up because I know that I have talked a lot and I'm just looking at my notes to make sure that I haven't missed anything but just to round up I think thinking about worth we we always think about one thing you know was it worth it did, did do you think your PhD was worth it if you just went into teaching? Or do you think it was worth it if you didn't get X job or if you're not a lecturer or if you're not, you know, X, Y, and Z? And I think it's a battle for myself, especially as someone who has quite the traditional parents, traditional mindset, I've been brought up quite traditionally to think you do X degree, you become a doctor, you go and do medicine. You don't become a doctor to make YouTube videos or you don't become a doctor to start a business or to work in tech. Like you, even if it makes more money, that traditional mindset of I'm doing a degree to do X thing, when actually sometimes worth it means I did a degree and I gained these skills that are so valuable that have allowed me now to do you know, the next thing and that's sometimes how you need to think about it. You know ultimately my PhD and my degrees that I did all have helped me get to where I am now which at such a young age is such is such a, an achievement to have accomplished all the things that I have in such a small and short amount of time and I have so many other goals as well and I'm really hoping that my PhD will continue to help me even even if those particular lab and research skills will never be used again like I don't think I'll probably I don't I don't say never but I don't think I'd ever go into a lab and, and do research again I, I don't think I mean I might I, I'm thinking about it maybe doing like something part-time but I don't think I'll ever go into the lab again and, and be there doing a you know western blot in the PCR like I don't think I will but that was never the skill that I, I, that was a skill that I thought I would always use, but I never thought that the skills that I gained doing that, the skills that, kind of the wider skills that I gained around that were the most valuable. Like it's, it's always what you don't expect. But yeah, anyway, let me know what you guys think. I, I've tried to be as honest as possible. And I guess, you know, my experience is my experience. Your experience might be different. And you know, for one person, something's valuable and worth it for someone else it isn't. So just be aware of that. But you know, I've reflected upon it and I'm kind of speaking out loud as I think about it. And yeah, let me know your thoughts if you're a PhD, if you're starting your PhD, where do you hope to be five years after you graduate? Which from now, if you're starting your PhD is maybe like 10 years from now, but where do you see yourself? Like, do you think that you're gonna end up where you started? I don't think you will. Like no one I know has actually ended up where they think they will end up. You always end up where you're meant to be. And I think that's the most important thing to remember. It's not about sticking to the plan that you had when you were 21. Grow and, and make decisions as you go along. And that those decisions can change and it's absolutely fine. But yeah, <laughs> I feel like I've spoken so much about this, and but I hope you guys find it interesting because you know, as a PhD graduate, these are the kind of thoughts that I've always had, you know, and been in a much higher position. And, but then I'm, you know, I wouldn't have been where I am now. So you know, I think it's important to have that balanced argument with yourself and when thinking about whether something's worth it or not. But anyway, I am gonna leave it at that. Let me know what you thought. Let me know um, if you enjoyed listening to me talk and just ramble on about whether I thought it was worth it or not, and, and give me your thoughts as well. I'd love to have conversations with you down in the comments below and I'll see you in my next video. Take care, bye.